Th that's too close. And oh, by the way, I just got this M4 MacBook Pro and I'm setting it up for programming. Would you like to see how I do that? Yeah, let's go. I recently got my hands on the new M4 MacBook Pro and I thought it'd be the perfect opportunity to show you how I typically set up a fresh MacBook for programming. When setting up my MacBook for programming, I like to declutter the dock by removing apps that I don't use. These can be the Photos app, Maps, Reminders or FaceTime. This will obviously be different for everyone, so remove those that make sense for you. I do recommend this however, as I find having a clean and optimized work environment, whether physical or on your Mac, definitely helps with productivity. When it comes to web browser, my go-to is always Google Chrome. Chrome is a popular choice for programmers in part due to its powerful developer tools, which allow for easy debugging and inspection of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Chrome also provides access to a wide selection of extensions tailored for developers, such as code formatters, API testers, and performance analyzers. Because it is one of the most used browsers, it is also good to test your websites as the users would see it. And with excellent support for modern web standards and frequent updates, Chrome ensures compatibility and a smooth development experience. When it comes to the terminal, I normally use the default MacBook One with CSH. The only change I make to the terminal is updating the theme to homebrew with the dark background and green characters. However, if you're looking for an alternative to the default terminal with more features, iTerm2 is a good option. It supports split panes, allowing you to run multiple terminal sessions side by side, advanced search and better color schemes. And to further enhance your terminal, try all my CSH for themes and plugins. And for a sleek and informative look, try the Power Level 10K theme, which displays useful prompts like Git status and system information. Next, we've got Homebrew. Homebrew is my go to package manager for macOS and it's essential for any developer. It is very convenient as it allows you to install and manage software, libraries, and tools right from the terminal. To install it, head to the Homebrew website at brew.sh, copy the install command, and run it in your terminal. It's that simple. Next, let's set up Git. For those who are not familiar, Git is a version control system that helps track changes in your code and collaborate with others and is by far one of the most essential tools for any programmer. Since we already have brew installed, we can install Git by running brew install git in the terminal. Next, I usually set up SSH keys to securely connect with my GitHub account. The instructions for this are available on the GitHub website and there are a few steps to follow, so I suggest you do that on your own. Once you have it set up, you can also integrate Git into your code editor to visualize changes and manage repositories directly from your code. Now, let's talk about Java. If you're doing backend development, Java might be part of your workflow. From experience, I have found that the best way to manage Java versions on macOS is with SDK Man. To install SDK Man, head to their website then copy and paste their install command into your terminal. You can then begin to use it by using the SDK command, followed by some instruction based on what you want to do. SDK Man makes it super easy to install and switch between different versions of Java and it's great for managing other SDKs as well. So you will have to look at their documentation to find the commands that work for you. Now on to code editors. There are many options, but my favorites are IntelliJ for backend work and VS Code for frontend. IntelliJ is a powerhouse IDE, especially for Java and JVM based languages like Kotlin, which is what I primarily use it for. It's packed with intelligent features like smart code completion, real-time error detection, and powerful refactoring tools. It also offers seamless integration for version control, testing frameworks, and build tools like Maven and Gradle. VS Code on the other hand is lightweight, fast, and packed with extensions for just about every language out there. If you haven't used it before, I highly recommend it. Now, because this is a MacBook, I also download Xcode. Xcode is Apple's IDE, used for building apps for iOS, macOS, watchOS, and tvOS. And even if you're not an app developer, installing Xcode or its command line tools could be beneficial as they provide essential compilers, libraries, and utilities needed for many programming languages and frameworks. And just as an aside, the first programming language I learned was actually Swift, so I always have Xcode installed for nostalgic purposes. Another tool I commonly use is Docker. Docker is great for developers as it allows you to run applications in isolated environments which is perfect for testing and deployment. With Docker Desktop, you can easily manage your containers on macOS. To get started, just install Docker Desktop and you're ready to go. You can run simple containers like a Node.js app or a database with just a few commands. Finally, let's talk about Postman. 
If you're working with APIs, Postman is a must-have. It allows you to test, develop, and debug APIs with ease thanks to its easy-to-navigate graphical interface. You can send requests, inspect responses, and even automate tests for your API endpoints. It is also very easy to import and export Postman collections if you're collaborating with other developers. And if you're looking for an alternative to Postman, Insomnia is another one that I've used in the past, although I still prefer Postman. That was all for today's video. If there's something else that you add to your MacBook when setting it up for programming, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.